Hi everyone, today I'll be showing you how to start a bullet journal. I already did a video covering this before which is linked in the description box below but this one is for anyone who wants to dive deeper into the world of bullet journal. I've been bullet journaling for a year now so I kind of found my preferred style and layout so in this video I will be showing you where to start, how I style my spreads, what setup works for me and hopefully share some useful tips and tricks with you. First of all I want to show you the beginners layout that I did before when I was a beginner too. So I started with my general pages, a simple cover page where you could put your details in just in case you lose your journal, an index page to keep tabs of your pages, a key page which is just to remember your keys and signifiers when you're logging, a future log, a goals page and then I went ahead with my monthly setup with the cover, a mood tracker, a habit tracker, a monthly log and the weeklies. So if you've seen any of my recent plan with me videos at all, you will notice that my style has really evolved over time. Since this is my second year of bullet journaling, now I know what pages I really need and the setups that work for me. This year I decided not to include an index page because I didn't really use it last year, so I went straight to a quote page and a title page. Then I have a future log, which as mentioned in my first beginner's guide to bullet journaling video, is where I log big events in the future like birthdays, anniversaries, holidays and things like that. And then I also have my collections pages. The collection pages are for things that I like to keep track of in my bullet journal, like my goals for the year. Then I have series and films I've seen, books I've read, podcasts and places I've travelled to and things I'm thankful for for the year. But you can collect these things for over a year if you want, I just like starting fresh each year. Then I have my monthly spreads with my log, trackers and weekly pages. Now I'm going to show you where to begin. So first you might want to start with your more general pages, things that don't really belong inside a month. So your cover page, index if you want one, keys and collection pages. The first idea is a vision board. This is good to have to set the tone for the year or for the moment that you start your bullet journal and you're feeling very pumped about organising your life. This is a good way to keep that motivation and that flow to keep you inspired. Your vision board doesn't really have to be pretty, but if it helps you, then feel free to add cutout pictures of what inspires you, some pretty text and some doodles. The next collection page you could do is a My Year in Polaroids page, which I've seen on Pinterest and Amanda Ridgely's yearly setup. I will also leave a link to her video in the description box below if you want to check that out for more ideas. So for this I'm just writing a simple title and a box the size of my Polaroid pictures for each month. The size is 11 by 17 boxes on our Stationery Island dotted notebooks. The idea is to stick a picture each month that highlights the month so you can remember that moment every time you look at your bullet journal. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I set up my monthlies. Like a lot of other bullet journalers, I like to set a theme for each month. So my theme for January was DAWs and for February I did airmail. Sometimes I like to match it with the season, so last October I did an autumn theme and for December I did a very Christmassy theme. But your theme is all up to you and your creativity, so you can do whatever you want, there are no rules. Just a tip for beginners is to pick a really simple theme to start with if you do want a theme. So for this example, I'm doing clouds, which is quite a forgiving theme because it can really be in any shape and if you mess up, it will be easy to cover it up. Next, I like to do a monthly log and I've tried a few monthly log layouts before, like a list format, a table for personal and work, and a calendar format. And the layout that I seem to like the most is the calendar format because it gives me a lot of room to get creative and decorate but it's also just familiar because I've always used a calendar growing up so that's the one that I find the easiest to use. So the calendar format is what I'm showing you right now. For this I'm just drawing a calendar right in the middle of a two page spread. The measurement for each box is 6x6 six six and the whole calendar table is divided into 7 columns for each day and 5 rows for each week. And then to stick to the theme I'm just adding drawings of clouds everywhere. On this calendar I like to write important events like birthdays, meetings and holidays. So after the monthly log I usually like to set up my monthly trackers. There's a lot of things that you can possibly track in your bullet journal. so. If you want more ideas, again, feel free to look for the links to these videos in the description box below. 
In this setup, I'm going to show you the two main trackers that I like to use and found the most helpful, which is a mood tracker and a habit tracker. So for my mood tracker, I'm drawing 30 clouds for each day of the month, then I'm just adding a legend at the bottom and I'm assigning a colour for each day of the month, so how it works is that I will colour in the cloud of the day with a colour that signifies my mood. You don't really need to use different colours if you don't have enough colours. Of course, you can do patterns or smiley faces. A mood tracker is good for tracking your emotions each day to see if this links to your habits, so then you can try to help combat sadness and maintain a good mood for each day. So the habit tracker is essentially to track your habits just to make sure you're doing them. I personally also use it to see which habits I don't really like to do so I can come up with a way to make it more fun and bearable in the future. For my habit tracker, I'm just drawing a grid for each habit I want to track. Each grid is divided into five columns and six rows for the 30 days of the month. So how this works is you just color in the square for each day if the habit you want to track has been done. So after my trackers, I like to do a month's highlights and this is where I can write more about each month. I also like to add doodles and pictures and this is just a good way to celebrate each month and really reflect on the things that I have to be grateful for. And of course to stick to the theme, I'm just adding a cloud border to frame the page. And that's another tip, to keep consistent to your theme, just make sure that you're adding elements of it on each page. So here I'm just making sure that I have clouds on every page. Alright, finally, after all the monthly pages, I like to do my weeklies, which is basically just a spread for each week where you can write notes and tasks to do. So for this, I'm just dividing the page in seven sections, and then I'm drawing a cloud for each day of the month, and then inside each cloud I'm writing the days, and because I have a space at the bottom, I decided to write another quote to take up the space. I also like to set up my weeklies every week instead of every month so I can just start on the next page if I ever mess up. And I also like to switch up my layouts weekly so I sometimes do vertical layouts, smaller boxes. You can do however you want and need to set up your weeklies. But you also don't have to switch it up if you want to stick to one layout, it's all up to you. And before I carry on with the flip through, I just want to talk about the giveaway. So the winner of this giveaway will receive a set of our brush pens, 24 colours, for you to beautify your spreads. I genuinely really like these brush pens, I love using them to decorate my spreads, I highly recommend them. So if you want to win a set, all you have to do is be subscribed to our channel, give this video a thumbs up and comment down below what you like about bullet journaling, what it means to you and why you keep or want to start one. The winner will be announced on our channel's community board next week, so please make sure to keep an eye out for that. And here's a final flip through of my beginner's setup. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any more questions, please comment them down below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already to become part of the Stationery Island community. Thank you all so much for watching, see you next week.